Okay, as we've mentioned previously, phylogeography is interested in the historical aspect, right? So how historical processes have shaped current distributions of species or populations. One thing historical processes can affect is how populations became separated from each other. And that can happen through two different processes, dispersal or vicariance, which we will discuss in this video. So some populations are isolated from each other because they were founded following these colonization or really rare long distance dispersal events. So this often happens when organisms are colonizing oceanic islands, for instance. So this on the right is a picture of the Ryukyu archipelago in Asia. I'm actually, my family is from Okinawa. I hope to visit someday. But in this system, they've looked at colonization across these different islands for the Okinawan tree lizard, which is shown here having a nice little snack. And what they found through phylogeography studies is that they think this species started down here in Taiwan. And then through a series of colonization events, they spread and dispersed northward through the archipelago. Some other species that are thought to have dispersed through these rare long distance movements across islands, for instance, are Galapagos tortoises. So again, the same type of thing. The Galapagos Islands are a series, a, a grouping of islands separated by oceanic water. And they think that these tortoises got to these different islands through these rare long distance movements. If you're wondering how a giant tortoise might do that, um, they think that they rafted there on logs or something. And that's where this picture from my module teaser comes in. The first time I was teaching this example when I googled a turtle and raft. This is what comes up. You get a picture of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle raft toy. Um, but this is an example. Again, Galapagos tortoises, they think, disperse through these rear long distance movements. So that's why these populations of tortoises are now distinct is because they had these really rare colonization events that happened once and they don't have continuous movement between the islands. Some populations, on the other hand, are isolated from each other because they used to be continuous, but for one reason or another, those connections have now been lost. So what I have here on the right is a picture of the Isthmus of Panama. So if we think historically, we had all of this water here, right? So the Caribbean side and the Pacific side, it didn't have sides. It was just all continuous water. And so if we had fish in there, for instance, they would be able to swim through and move between. So this essentially was one continuous population. When we have something like the Isthmus of Panama, now this giant landmass arising, what that's doing now is separating the Caribbean side and the Pacific side. So if we had this green fish over here that used to be able to swim through to the other side, now there's this giant landmass and we might end up with some kind of speciation happening or a different, that fish can now evolve separately. So that now we have two different populations that are separated, the red population and the green population. They used to be a continuous population, they're now separated because their connection was lost due to this barrier, such as the Isthmus of Panama. And the term that we use to refer to this splitting of formerly continuous populations by barriers, such as rivers, mountains, or giant land masses, if you're talking about the ocean, is vicariance. And so I have a citation here, and I'm showing an image of a soft furred mouse that's a habitat specialist in Eastern Africa. And these mice specifically live in tropical montane forests. So historically, there were forests all over the place, which means we had little mice running around. They could be anywhere within these habitats. Through periods of drier climate, what happened is some of these forests were wiped out and so what that means is now we have separated populations. So now this 
might be population one, this might be population two, and there's no movement between them because the forest doesn't exist between them. And this particular mouse has to live in that forest habitat to survive. So it's an example of how we used to have a continuous population because of a vicariance event. Now we have populations that are separated from each other by a barrier. And so again, if we think about these processes, dispersal or vicariance, that happened historically before present day. And if we're doing a phylogeography type study, we might want to figure out and differentiate, okay, we have these current distributions, what caused them? Was it due to dispersal or was it due to vicariance? So how do you think we might be able to differentiate those two different processes? So the first thing we often want to do is figure out how long ago these different populations diverged. So you can use something called a molecular clock, which is a method that I'm not going to go into. You can read about it in your textbook if you want to know. But basically what this will tell you is the rate of evolutionary change. And then you can look at your data and determine based on the amount of genetic differences that exist between these different populations, and then use that rate of change to calculate and figure out at what point in time these two populations actually split. So what I'm showing here is a reference, and in this image are different types of shrimp that actually diverged between the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. And when we use these molecular clock techniques, we can estimate that these species all diverged about 3.5 million years ago. So that's our estimate for the time when they diverged. The next thing we wanna do then is figure out if this timing coincides with the timing of a known vicariance event. So a known vicariance event might be something like the separation of continents or uplifting up the isthmus of Panama. That again is what I'm showing here in this image. And we know from geographical, geological data that the Isthmus of Panama uplifted about 3.5 million years ago. Okay, so now we have our timing for our vicariance event and we have our timing for population or species divergence. And so what we then do is see if the divergence time matches the timing of the vicariance event then populations were likely separated due to vicariance, not to dispersal. So essentially, if your divergence time is the same as when that vicariance event happened, then we're assuming that the separation of populations is due to that vicariance event. Here on the left, I'm showing a picture of these different shrimp species. And in this case, because of the particular type of barrier that the Isthmus of Panama was, we actually have other evidence that also indicates these populations were separated because of the Isthmus of Panama. Because of the oceanic nature, you have lots of different species in the ocean, right? And there are actually evidence from other species as well, including this pork fish, where if you estimate their divergence time, it's also 3.5 million years ago, which also again indicates that separation of both the shrimp and the fish species here was due to a vicariance event, in this case, the uplifting of the Isthmus of Panama, which happened about 3.5 million years ago. All of those three different things, the uplifting, the divergence time for the shrimp, and the divergence time for these pork fish, all indicate that same date, which leads us to conclude that, in this case, vicariance is what caused these different populations to become isolated.